This is Hoffman from the Radical Reporters News Station. This just in. We have received word of a zombie outbreak on the University of Oklahoma campus. As of this time, it is unsure what has caused this outbreak, but it appears that all of the affected individuals share one commonality, organic chemistry. We have one of our reporters, Zaitsev, live on the scene of the chaos in the South Oval. Let's cut to him. That's right, Hoffman. Zombies have completely taken over the South Oval. I spoke to some scientists earlier today who have retrieved a sample of zombie blood and are testing it currently to figure out what is going on. Well, while we check on Zaitsev, let's cut to one of our scientists in his laboratory, Dr. Turt B. Utenal. Good thing it wasn't Hoffman. He's the reporter that I always prefer. Anyways, back in the lab, we isolated from a student turned zombie's blood, we isolated this chemical, 345-trimethyl-4-bromoheptane, and there's its structure right there. We also discovered that it undergoes an E2 process to form these two products that have been shown to cure zombification among the affected. And now I'm going to explain to you an E2 process in general. A strong base like sodium hydroxide will react with hydrogen in a hydrogen transfer that will then cause the leaving group to leave, in this case, bromine. And this happens all in one step. And after that, of course, the, a pi bond is formed between the, the electrons. So like, there's the pi bond, there's a pi bond. You following? Anyways, this forms two different products, either the Hoffman or the Zaitsev product. And the Hoffman product is less common, and it's it forms with the least substituted carbons, so it has the least number of bonds. And this is the most substituted carbons because it's got the most number of bonds. And that concludes my discussion of E2 mechanisms. And now we're going to discuss E1 mechanisms. Now this won't help us on our quest to stop the zombification of students, but it will help you learn organic chemistry, and that's good, all right? So now we have a molecule of 2-chloro-2-methylpropane and it's going to react with H2O to form this eventually. But first, with an E1 mechanism, you're going to have the loss of a leaving group. And chlorine is a very good leaving group, so it's going to go ahead and just leave, like I said. And that forms a carbocation. This carbocation is positively charged because it just lost the chlorine. And what happens next is the base, in this case water, attacks a hydrogen to get a proton transfer, and the remaining electron forms a pi bond here, a double bond, to stabilize this out. And that's how E1 mechanisms work. They are unimolecular because they rely on just the substrate and not the, not the base to form a reaction. And that is all I have to say about E1 reactions. Back to you, Hoffman. Hello everyone, this is Hoffman. I have just received the cure from Dr. Turt B. Utenal, right here. Let's go see if it works on a real-life zombie out in the wild. Did it work? I'm cured! The cure works! Now we can go and cure all of the students across OU's campus. Huzzah!